up, tribe? So much to unpack in so little time. I, once again, didn't do my weekend roundup. Not, I just, y'all, it was so much. It's so much. But here's the thing. I was planning on doing it Sunday. But stuff just kept going on and kept happening. So here's the thing. I'm going to unpack a few things. So the first thing I want to unpack is this whole Tamar Ayala. Now she beefing with Funky Dineva. Here's what I want to say about, about, let me start from the beginning. What I was going to say about the whole Ayala situation is this. I'm not going to speak on her revelation to Wendy Williams about the, the sexual abuse. Not my thing. Not going to speak on it. Nope. Hands off. But what I am going to say is she said that she felt like um, Ayala talked to her crazy and was disrespectful and was shaming her because she had gotten the secret from somebody else. And she found out that she was going to sort of, I guess, sort of got you with it, which I don't. I don't think she was going to got you with it. I'd have to see the footage to see how it actually came down the pipe. Because Tamar is a drama queen and she sees things her own way. Things She interprets things her own way that didn't happen that way or weren't said that way. And she hears what she wants to hear. I don't think that that's what happened. I do think that what was told to Tamar was that Ayala knows about the abuse and... Maybe that it was going to be addressed or brought up or whatever. And Tamar's not ready for that. But then she went on Wendy Williams. So I need to see the footage and find out exactly what happened with that whole piece. But I'm not going to speak on it um, in reference to her experience and, and um, her abuse. What I'm going to say though is this. I look at going on Ayala Van Zandt the same way I look at People who go on Judge Judy or people who used to try for American Idol when Sam Simon Kyle was a judge. The first season, maybe the second season, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. By the third season, you know what the fuck you're getting and I don't have no sympathy for you. So for, for people who used to be like, His Simon is so mean, I can't believe he's being that mean. What the fuck did you think he was getting? He been mean to everybody else. Did you think you were going to get something different, something special? Hell, he had to eat crow and apologize to Jennifer Hudson because of the stuff he said about Jennifer Hudson. And then her ass turned around and won a fucking Oscar. It's not that... I think that's just who he is. And when a person shows you who they all believe him. Same thing with Judge Judy. They be like, she don't have to be that nasty. She don't have to be that rude. Okay, maybe not. But you ain't got to go on her show. That is all voluntary. Ain't nobody making you go on Judge Judy. You choose to let your court case go to Judge Judy for whatever people's reasons are. So you can't be mad that when you get there, she start acting the daggone fool. That is what she does. And then I had a, a friend who had a family member that went on there. And she said, well, the producers were telling them that, you know, that they wanted them to be feisty. Or they wanted them to talk back because they wanted to create a moment. Well, that's what TV is. Creating moments. She ain't been on the air all these years because she don't know how to create a moment. So, I mean, these are real court cases. But, of course, sometimes people act a little feisty or act a certain way or do certain things because it makes for good TV. Because the thing about going on those shows is that your case is taken care of. That's the incentive to even go on the show. But I ain't going down that road. So, when those sisters agreed to go on Ayala Van Zandt, you knew what the fuck you was going to get. First of all... Tracy has already dealt with Ayala when she did the Sober House, when Ayala's first show way, 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 way back in the day, Tawanda went on there. And Tawanda went on there because she said she felt like it was, um, it was Ayala, it was Sober House. And I want to say it was on BET a long time ago, long before she got her notoriety. I mean, she was known, obviously, because they had her do the show, but she wasn't what she is now. And it was before the Oprah and before the books and stuff like that. And Tawanda went on there. And one of her issues when she went on there was her relationship with her sisters. And she felt as though her sisters sort of, um, they didn't agree with this right, like around the time when she first got married. I don't even know if she had children at that point. But that was one of her problems with her relationship. And she said that, and her big issue was with Tamar. And the problem was, it's on YouTube. And the problem was, her issue with Tamar was because um, 
Tamar left the group and didn't give them any warning. Remember, they were the Braxtons. After Tony, they had their own group. They had a record deal, and they were called the Braxtons. And I want to say they came out with an album. And either the album didn't do that great or whatever. And Tawanda said that when they were getting ready to get to start to get ready to do their second album, they found out through the grapevine or through her representation, it wasn't through Tamar, that she wasn't going to do a second album, that she was going to go do her own thing. She got her own record deal. So my thing is... This ain't nothing new with Ayala. Then we know that Ayala, that um Trina went on Ayala last um season to do the Fix My Life with Gabe, and you saw then where she where Ayala brought up her relationship with her mother and her relationship with her father, and she said, "Who taught you to be an angry black woman? You learned that from your mother." So you knew where this was going when y'all agreed to let Ayala come in and fix y'all relationship. T.D. Jakes couldn't fix y'all relationship. I want to say y'all talked to somebody else and they couldn't fix... Y'all done went to another counselor. Y'all done been to at least three different counselors. And they can't fix y'all relationship. So you go to Ayala and then you want to get mad because Ayala does what she does. That's what she fucking does. You know? She, she, she comes raw. She comes real. Maybe some people think it's too real or too raw or artificially raw you know like it's a whole lot of stuff with that but that is who she is that is what she does so you coming up now and being in your feelings and being mad i just can't have a whole lot of sympathy for that I... okay so then you go on wendy williams because you you go you tweet about Rhonda and how she's the devil that's ayana's real name in case y'all don't know that and how she's the devil and this, that, and the other. So you, I guess, you decide that you're going to tell your own story and not allow them to tell your story for you. So you go, um, I'm sorry. So you go um, on to Wendy Williams. Of all the outlets, you go to Wendy Williams. But okay, y'all have, you have a relationship with Wendy. You've been on Wendy a few times. You and Vince went on Wendy when y'all started having problems. Like, y'all, Wendy is your girl. Cool. Wendy didn't even know what you was going to say. Because Wendy's face was just like... Because uh, mm. trust and believe, you know Wendy knew she was getting that exclusive and getting that type of bombshell. That, honey. Whoa. Whoa. Um, then last night with the Queen's Court, which I'm going to do my Queen's Court review in a few minutes. But last night, well, I might just... No, I'm going to do it separate. Um, with the Queen's Court, Funky Dineva, you were on the docket. And Funky Dineva had a lot of things to say about you personally. Funky Dineva spoke on you personally. Funky Dineva did not make light or make fun of the molestation. Matter of fact, a couple of times Funky Dineva said, pause, stop, this is serious, I'm not making a joke right now. And when he was addressing... Your relationship, your situation with the molestation and the abuse. He was very clear to say he was not making fun and he was not making a joke of it. Now, he did roast your ass about your Nigerian um, boo and how he might be scamming you and how your sisters better watch their credit and their social security number. He did roast you about um you not visiting Vince in the hospital. He roasted you now, but he ain't roast you over that. So, what I think happened, James Wright is a fan of the show. He's been at a live taping. Him and Maddie seem to be friends, or oh, a friend is too strong of a word, a very cordial. I think he was watching the show, and I think he let Tamar know what was going on. And, or, Tamar's fans tagged her. We all know that Tamar is an internet troll, that she, she's like a Cardi B. And she's on even a higher plane than a Cardi B is. But she does that same shit Cardi B does. She sees for mentions. She sees what people are saying about her. She sees what comments are being made about her. And she fucking claps back like she ain't got shit else to do. Tamar, you are a grown-ass woman with a child, a husband, and a boyfriend now. 
Now, I don't know if your events, uh, 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 divorce is final, but neither here nor there. You are a grown-ass woman with grown-ass woman responsibilities. Why the fuck are you worried about what somebody is saying about you on the internet show? And that is no disrespect to the Queen's Court. None whatsoever. You know I love me some Maddie, and you know I love that show. But I'm just saying, in the grand scheme of things, you really about to clap back on somebody who's giving their opinion, and that's what they do. Everybody know what the fuck Funky Dineva does? That is what he does. That is what he been doing. And for you to get that bent out of shape and that upset, excuse me, over that the roasting gag, like really? And I don't even like that term roasting gag because I think it's been overused in the last couple of months with this whole Kaya T.S. bullshit. But for real, for real, that's really all it was. And you weren't, you were on the docket. They said their piece and they moved on. And for you to come into the live show and then be wrong... And then be wrong. And then be wrong. Because um, Funky Dineva, a.k.a. Quentin, because we can address him however you want to be addressed. He ain't say shit or make fun of your abuse or your molestation. He did not. He did not. So whoever went running to you with that messy shit, first of all, I don't even blame them. I really don't. I don't blame the people who told you. I blame you for not getting your facts straight before you come up in somebody motherfucking feed talking shit. That's what I blame. You and Maddie are friends. Pick up the phone and call her and say, girl, why you let that man drag me on your show? And then Maddie could have responded accordingly. You got Maddie number? Call her. So... That's that. That's my two cents on that. I'm going to drop. I'm going to come back with my Queen's Court review, which ain't going to be real long. Um, I, I'm trying to decide if I got anything to say about this Cat Williams piece. I, I don't know. It's been, it's a lot. It's that, that's a whole lot of layers, too. God darn. And every time I think it's a story, you, you done, Cat Williams do something else. So, I don't know. But anyway, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think that Funky Dineva was wrong? Did y'all see, before y'all answer, did y'all see the show? Did you see what Funky Dineva said and did not say? Because be, be clear, before you start talking about what somebody guilty of, make sure you saw the show. So go over to T.S. Madison page, watch the show. It's early on in the show. It's like within the first 20, 30 minutes of the show where they talk about this whole Tamar piece. Then give me your opinion. Let me know what y'all think. Peace.